Good evening, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. It's Tuesday evening, 11 p.m. I had to redo this video because of a system crash. It's 8 p.m. on the West Coast. There's no baseball tonight. World Series starts tomorrow. But there's lots of weather to talk about, so let's get right to it. In this edition, we'll be talking about the uh, upcoming cold blast and the one coming in at the end of the month as well. The uh, snow buildup over uh, the Northern Hemisphere looks pretty good right now. Some major changes going on in the Northern Hemisphere pattern. Uh, significant rain event for the Midwest and the East. Maybe some significant snow for the Central Plains and into the Western Great Lakes. The second cold blast after the rain event in the Midwest or the East Coast on October 31st to November 2nd or 3rd. And it looks like a mild mid-November coming up as huge changes occur at the high-level blocking patterns. And we'll be talking about that and how that's going to affect things as well. So lots to talk about. Now this first map here, this is the actual jet stream pattern now from, uh, I guess this would be from October 18th. Yeah. And as you can see, let me call it my marker here. Here's our ridge right there. You can see that. There's P&A Ridge. Now this feature here, that's the Aleutian Low. That's actually the Aleutian Islands. So this is the Aleutian Low right here. And that actually is known as the EPO. See that? And when that's the negative phase, then you get a big, which is what it is now, that causes the ridge to form. See? So that thing here. So negative EPO uh, leads to a positive P&A, which is what this is. Okay, got it. Now there's our block. There's our negative NAO. You can see that. Very nice right there. Okay. And then we also have a bit of a vortex here as well. So there's our flow. You can see the flow coming down this way, bringing the cold air in. And that's why the pattern turned cold. Okay, so far so good. Now this here is the uh, current jet stream map as of uh, October uh, 22nd here. And again, we can continue to see some important features. Let me call this up here. Here's our trough very nicely. Look the block there. See the block? Negative NAO right here. That's good. And then also we still have our ridging right here. See the ridge? Okay. And the Aleutian Island. There's our Aleutian Low. Negative EPO right there. That's good. But also what's happened here is that the polar vortex has intensified significantly right here. And uh, we can see that by, uh, let me uh, change this so you can see very nicely. There's the polar vortex right there. And what's happened is it's now moved to, into the uh, North Pole. And that's changing the Arctic Oscillation. So from before when this cold pattern set up, we had a very positive indications at the high levels of the atmosphere for a cold pattern setting up. A negative Arctic Oscillation, AO, and a negative NAO. Now, and of course a positive a PNA, now we have the uh, Arctic Oscillation turning positive. Why? Because the polar vortex has exploded over the North Pole. And when it does that, that changes the phase of the Arctic Oscillation. So that's why we'll see how that happens in, as we go through this. Now, this is the map for Wednesday morning from the European model. Now, again, look what's happening here. This is very important. You've got to follow this. Look at this polar vortex here. It's gone boom down to 492 decameters. That's not what it was 48 hours ago, 72 hours ago. And it's moving towards the North Pole. And when you get a huge vortex like that with lots of contours around it, so it looks like a giant target, that fall, and it's over the North Pole, that causes the Arctic Oscillation to turn positive. Now, you can have a polar vortex, let's say, over Quebec, Canada, or Scandinavia, and that's not a positive Arctic Oscillation. When the vortex is over the North Pole, the Arctic Oscillation goes positive. The Aleutian Low is still there. We can see this very nicely still there. There's still our ridge. You see the ridge right here. And here's our trough. But look what happens. Now the, the, the NAO has now gone neutral. We still have a little bit of blocking in eastern Canada, but we're seeing the heights beginning to lower over Greenland. Greenland and now the NAO has gone neutral here. So that's another factor as it begins to change. These are our morning temperatures for the 25th of October. Very impressive, as you can see. Uh, not record setting, but impressive nonetheless. This is October 25, the coldest along the East Coast, down from the Carolinas, you know, all the way up to um, up in New England here. Uh, very impressive. Again, nothing record shattering, but all the cold definitely right here in this area, and even in the mountains of North Carolina. But it doesn't last, but it's still nice to see, especially if you like the cold weather like I do. So uh, there's that first blast. Now take a look at our snow cover. Now what's interesting here is that um, this here, let me point this out to you. See the date here? This is October 28th, 2009, when we had the big severe winter. Now this is <coughs> the recent one, excuse me, of October 20th. <coughs> excuse me here. And um, 
we can see that even though this is about the same time, it's a little week earlier, and the snow cover still looks pretty good. Um, if anything, it's a little stronger over here. And this is interesting. We still have that weakness in the gap there, the snow cover. They had one there in 2009. The snow is a little here, a little more strong in northern Canada. Very similar. Oh, that's the important point here. So I don't know if it means anything, but so far we're in pretty good shape here with the snow cover. It continues to run uh, above normal. Now let's take a look. We got some ENSO information from the Europeans. Now this here was the, um, this is from uh, August 1st. This is September 1st. And this is the recent one. See up in here? Before we had a big spread. You see how we had the spread like this? See how it spread a big, we couldn't really figure it out. But now we definitely have a much more narrow spread in here, which is showing a weak, possible weak El Nino. Maybe. And it might not. It may just be close to the threshold all winter long. So if it happens, it probably wouldn't happen until, let's say, uh, December or January, the earliest. So um, we're getting more consensus. This is actually very similar to what we saw with the CFS, the last few ones of the CFS. So that's the good news. We're getting consensus here. The MJO, well, that's, that's not a factor here at all uh, for the time being. And the reason why it's not really a factor is because it's stuck in the circle of death. So it's not an issue. So we can say goodbye to the MJO. Maybe it'll wake up later on in the winter, but right now it's not. Here's the European model, the uh, Tuesday run. This is now valid for Sunday. <clears throat> and what's happened here is we can see this very important uh, feature here, this vortex right in here. See this one? There it is. It's going to drop down this way. And as it does, it's going to swing around and alter the pattern. Here's our trough that's sliding off the coast. Another shot of very cold air up in northwest Canada. Look what happens 48 hours later. We'll see how that develops. Now the look at the system right here. See it? And you call it my markers. You can see there it is. Boom. There's a short wave. Now, this short wave that came down, as you can see it, and uh, here's the low. Look at these cold high right up in here. Very impressive. A lot of cold air in here. Now, all this is snow in the Rockies and Central Plains here. You can see the rain snow line very nicely here. So all this is snow in here. See this? This is all snow. And this is significant rain developing. Now, we're also getting inflow from the Gulf of Mexico. So this has got a potential to be a nice system for the Plain States in the Midwest, no doubt about it. And uh, if we look further down the road, this is day seven now. This is the large-scale map. What's happened here, look at this. Very important. The vortex has just exploded. We actually have two centers of it, one here and one here. And, of course, the polar vortex over the Arctic region, when you have a huge one like this, positive Arctic oscillation. The NAO is now strongly positive, as you can see. There's actually low pressure now over Greenland. Uh, 500 millibar low, but low pressure there nonetheless. So that's now positive NAO. And the, look at this. The Aleutian low, it's gone completely. So <clears throat> all those things showing the pattern is about to shift it once again. And this is the uh, service map, as you can see, 192 hours out. Look, this is all snow in here, right in here. Let me call this up. You can see it. It's all snow in here because of the cold air coming down this way. <clears throat> and this here is rain. We're getting some inflow again right here, as you can see. See the inflow coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. Notice here that all the cold air is now following up in here. So this is rapidly, this is the last of the cold air here beyond this system for a while until this front passes on through. So that's October uh, 20th, uh, 30th, and you can see that. Here's our temperatures. The only cold air, as you can see, all the cold is right here. That's snow in here, but this is all in rain. It's too, way too warm for snow, and all the serious cold air is back up in here. If we look at our teleconnections here, we can see some important features very nicely. Let me call it my marker here. This here is the Arctic Oscillation. See it? And this here is the uh, NAO. What are we seeing? It's uh, the Arctic Oscillation is close to neutral now. Then it goes boom, booms out, stays all the way through. It becomes very strong around the 29th. See that? And the same thing here. The NAO negative and then boom, strongly positive the rest of the way after the, by the end of the month. No doubt about that. And if we look at the other ones on the in the Pacific side, the EPO, again, the Aleutian low disappears, goes away by October 29th, and the EPO goes to neutral. And the PNA, which is very strong now, October 23rd to the 25th, drops down to neutral by the 29th, as you can see that. See it right here? See how it comes right here's our peak, and then it drops down this way, and then it goes here. See that? There you go. So, again, that's showing signs that the pattern is changing. And if we look at other teleconnections, this here is from the folks at ESRL, as you can see down here. And um, they look at the NAO. You can clearly see the NAO um, coming up neutral, then boom, taken off that way. And then the EPO, again, very negative here, as you can see, and then becoming neutral, so the, which means Pacific flow. 
So the whole ridge on the west coast of North America breaks down. And there's even another indication of that. Here's the NAO, and you can see it's at, by days 4, day 7, day 10, day 14, strongly, strongly positive developing NAO. As the pattern shifts and the polar vortex moves into Greenland and causes the NAO to go from negative to positive. Now, this is the uh, European here at day 10, the ensemble. And what we see here is very important. Look at these huge vortex. Wow. Look at this. 498. That's an ensemble mean. It may actually be like 488. And it's located right over the, the North Pole. I mean, holy mackerel. Somebody tell Santa. And uh, that's a very positive uh, Arctic oscillation. You can see it very clearly right here. When you have a war, huge polar vortex over the North Pole, the Arctic oscillation is positive. Now you have a negative NAO, but it's not. It's, it should be positive NAO, I should say. And you have a look at this negative anomaly over Greenland. So now we have a positive NAO there as well. We still have a bit of a trough here and getting a little bit of northwest flow. This is after the this is November 1st, so after the October 30th event goes off the East Coast. So it's not a real warm up yet, but it is coming. You can clearly see that. And we can compare the uh, GF, the European models here. Now, this is the operationally European day 10. Look, at it has this big low. You can see it right here. Excuse me. Let me go back here. It has a big low right there, as you can see, um, over the uh, southwest, day, over the delta. See this low right here? Look at this baby. Now, the model, I'm not sure why it does that. It's a uh, European's glitch. If you look at the ensemble mean, it does not have that at all. You can see there's nothing there. And this is a pretty nice flow again. This is seasonally cold air. Not hugely cold air, but seasonally cold air. So obviously the ensembles are saying this big upper low with a lot of heavy rain over the delta, that's probably overdone, is what the ensemble mean is saying here. Now if we go further out in time, this is the GFS here now for uh, day 10, for our, I guess the beginning, uh, yeah, this is November 1st. And again, what do we see here? Uh, very clearly, very powerful P, 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 a positive, uh, excuse me, polar vortex, and a very positive Arctic oscillation. And we can see the trough axis is here. And look at the flow coming in from the Pacific, folks. Look at the flow. This is all mild, mild air coming in. So once this swings off the coast, here comes the blowtorch, essentially what I'm saying, after November 3rd. And this is uh, November 4th, and you can see it. The vortex is over there. The Arctic oscillation is super positive, as you can see. See this over the pole? There it is. They're right there. And the NAO is super positive here. And now this comes off the coast. See the trough axis is now over Newfoundland, Canada. And all we have here is super, 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 super warm Pacific air coming eastward. That's what's going to happen. So that's why I think November after the 2nd or 3rd is going to really warm up east of the Rockies. And this is the European Ensemble for November 4th. Same sort of thing. Lots and lots of really mild air here. And let me call it my mark, as you can see. Uh, the vortex, a huge one here, another one there. Uh, lots of flow this way across the country. All the cold air is wrapped up in here. And that's a mild pattern, no doubt about it. So that's what it looks like to me. And then this is the Europe, this is the GFS, excuse me, for the same time frame. Also for uh, November 6th, same sort of pattern. You can clearly see it. There's no difference. It's not changing. Um, as long as we have this feature here, okay, that's going to keep the, the NAO positive and the Arctic oscillation is go positive and you have the flow this way, that's a mild pattern. Not going to stay for long, but it's going to be that way through the mid-November. So you ought to get used to it. And that way, if you know about it, it's going to be going to be a surprise. And you don't have to freak out, especially if you're a winter lover. Mild Novembers don't mean anything for anybody. So there's no reason to be that upset over it. Anyway, that's the report. I'm meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.